Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Muckle Lover, in which we are playing as the Italian Empire. It is July 1971, in which now we must choose which way we will go with work for Italy or work for else, work or else, as well as float the currency, gold for the fatherland. So, economy will become more stable, we'll grow at a slower rate. Let's float the currency. Preventing the lira's rate to fluctuate may look initially like the obvious solution to our current crisis, but it ignores the fact that such a move will, in a sense, isolate our markets from other nations, including our embattled trading partners in the U.S. and Japan. Furthermore, fixing the currency will inhibit growth at a time where we desperately need any sign of economic improvement to have a hope at clawing our way out of this mess. While it might be a slightly tricky or risky, allowing the lira to flow with the global currency are market forces, however bad they may be, ultimately present us with the best chance of weathering the economic storm and of course lose some stability but that's okay yeah last time we had this oil in the last episode i should say we had the oil crisis which changed our focus street so we can't get rid of taxation and i just don't think there's anyone i can send volunteers to down here so we've got a few comments to go through as well we can negotiate licenses but they probably don't want to talk about negotiating licenses down there but at least hey we have our own faction the mediterranean block this is looking really nice actually Look at that. It's the actual Italian Empire. Kingdom of Egypt, of course, as well. So, not bad. You know, we lost some of our colonies. Or at least some of our allies. But hey, we got all the way between Romania all the way down here. So that's not too bad. So, pull the currency. And then we shall probably go ahead and just do work for Italy. Whatever else the Duce says, he's certainly no miser. And like unlikely the greedy capitalists and other nations, he greatly values a noble worker. Above all, he values a brave worker who feels the progress of the state with the sweat from his brow. He knows that if there was ever a time when workers were needed, it's now. We'll publicly announce highly generous incentives for any workers willing to join the oil industry and even greater accommodations for those willing to work overtime in the scorching oil states of the Libyan desert. Benefits offered economic relief, increased rations allowance, and subsidized room and board for those who sent to the newly constructed Libyan oil barracks, where workers will live until their services are no longer required. This will take a cut out of our funding, but all possible, all possibilities must be addressed and done to encourage the highest labor pool possible available, possibly available. Slightly more fuel per game, which is totally fine. Slowly losing more political power. It is what it is, you know. There's not really much else we can do with, you know, whatever we can do, just because, as we saw yesterday. Um, even when we had enough political power, it didn't get rid of the political power when I selected some of these decisions, so it's very odd. And obviously Italy's still a little bugged, but that's alright. Got, got a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm during these trying times. Man, I'd love to tap some reserves. Oh, it's increased special forces deployment. Oh, there it goes. Well, all those people. The alliance collapses. Exactly what you love to see. 75% towards nuclear weaponry. Not bad, not bad. And work for Italy, then we'll probably go ahead and weather the storm. Oh boy. Wait. Wait. The government of oh, that's, that's Portugal. So, with such an unprecedented economic calamity bearing down upon our nation, we have no choice but to slash funding for any and all programs de deemed non essential. Unfortunately for the people of Italy, it will be towards the public budget to towards which austerity will be directed. Parts of the council have no doubt called for the military to likewise receive slash funding, but with the unstable geopolitical situa situation as it is, we cannot afford to show any outward weakness. We need a strong military to deter the Germans in the north and the garrison to maintain our ever tenuously gripped subject and territories. Infrastructure will be the first to be audited. Our roads will do good enough for the moment. After all that, all departments are on the table. Social safety programs will be included on the chopping block, although this may prove as one of the most extreme actions taken thus far. Still, the faster we clean this up, the faster things can re begin return to a return to a sense of normalcy, which is a good thing. All right, I got some more naval doctrine done, and we're done with it. Nice. Uh, let's see, air doctrine, of course, is finished. Aircraft stuff, not super, super important, but we'll grab some better advanced jet fighters, because we can. And... Let's invest in our GDP. <clears throat> not bad. And then, I, there's not much else it looks like there's here. Maybe except a cry, clash of the Axis. The unthinkable has happened. Germany's betrayed us for the second time. In truth, we knew since the day that swine won the Civil War, and that his masters would try with the brute force that they failed to do with betrayal and their gosh darn dam. We've seen their troops gathering at the borders and their airplanes waiting on airships in numbers they've not seen since the last war. And we have prepared. That's really conquer Iberia. Interesting. Cool. Well, the Regia Acercito is on full alert. Then Alpini Garrison in the Alps. The Regia Alt Aeronautica is ready to fill the skies and the Regia Marina will sink any submarine threatening the Mare Nostrum. As the air is filled with smoke and blood and death, we will go to war fully knowing that the consequences of defeat. Italia, uh, Italiani 
Rally to the Tricolor. We will fight the greatest battle against our greatest foe. The Germans have tried bringing us down many times. The Teutons, Marcomans, Barbarossa, and Austrians have voted. And we've always sent them back to the frozen land and the shame of defeat. One last time, under the breach. Weather the storm. The economic crisis has been devastating, but with Duce scores of captaining the ship, we shall weather the storm come what may. There comes to mind an old joke about two men who find themselves trapped in a jungle without, with a leper. Why do you put your boots on? Asks the first. You should not outrun the beast. Yet, yeah. of course, the second must only outrun his fellow, not the beast. With strength and tenacity, we should be able to outrun our enemy, and when we do so, the crisis will come to an end. For now, though, one sole option remains to us. Keep running. Alright, so just in case... Oh, that's in the GDP, of course. Uh, we have all of our soldiers on the line, including over here. So just in case we actually do end up going to war, which I kind of doubt we'll do, but we'll see what happens. There you go. And let time go on. There you go. Do the Ukraine because you can. Anything else here? Expanding infrastructure, testing stuff, military austerity. Uh, we probably don't need that. There you go. Ukraine's going on. Moscow. And we can go do naval department. What else are we still building up here? A lot of roads. It's not bad. I like roads. I like the island of Rhodes, which got a little bigger when we did Atlantropa. Germany invades. <clears throat> cool. So, worst nightmare has come to pass. With the Germans' war machine hungry for oil, the fear of greed has overwhelmed his common sense. Just a scant few hours ago, German troops crossed the border into Italian territory. The Reich's armies are already closing in on the first Italian border towns in the Alps. The full might of one of the world's greatest superpowers is bearing down Italy. God help us all drive them back. Well, they're not actually here yet, but call to the world. The world watches German tanks roll through the plains of Hungary, the past the mountains of Switzerland, across frozen Sweden and the Russian waste. Despite all the provinces to stop the German foe, they watched and did nothing. Whether from laziness or cowardice, we must take, make it clear to the nations of the planet that this is no longer an option. Italy is a humanity's last, best hope to defeat the Germans, and must be supported accordingly. Whether in the form of volunteers, tanks, rifles, intelligence, or grain, we will take what the world gives and ask for more, after all. If the Huns should ever march freely through Rome, what does it stop them from parading through Washington and Tokyo soon after? Let's see what happens. I don't think we'll actually go to war, but since Goring is gone, and yeah, they couldn't take out Bulgaria, so yeah. But we'll see what happens. Let's go and survey for a project. How about that? And do it again because he can. After that, labor will win the war. Men will win the war. But we're still fascists, so working overtime, sacrifice stability for higher industrial output, enact a draft. Improve our intelligence age. Eh. Attack and reinforce it. Where are you? Where were you? On the green. Hit them quick. Hit them out fast. Get a good night's sleep. Stability and efficiency. Sacrifice stability for high strong but A call to the world. The fate of the Italian Empire has never been so dire. The might of the entire German Reich, the largest war machine the world has ever seen, is bearing down on our lands. Should they break the Alps, the Empire with all their vital industries would fall into the hands of a pitiless, all consuming war machine. This sound issue will call to the world. We must make one thing clear to the world that either the Reich is broken here or on the walls of the Alps, or it'll take drive on until it's devoured the entire wo world entire. Every nation we can contact. Every man we can reach must send help. The situation is dire, but every scrap of aid gives us just a bit more hope that we might make it through this. We can't stop them alone. So, basically, the goal here now is just to pretty much finish off the focus tree and see what happens. So, call for foreign support. The conceptual notion of fascism won many supporters around the world. The implementation of that notion, however, has been rather less than popular. Nonetheless, there remains plenty of fascists spread across the east and west alike. Red shirts, silver shirts, white shirts, blue shirts. All will travel to defend the last bastion of the people's revolution against the German menace when called upon. Even those who have not seen the light of the national revolution will understand that it is all that stands between them and oblivion. In this, time, in this time of great need, we will take even Democrats, even communists willing to support Italy in the greatest struggle. Italy under... Oh god, I wonder what they're going to do. But I kind of doubt they'll do anything. <clears throat> what is this? It's a shield. There goes the Socialist Federation of Iran. Goodbye, Socialists. See you next time. And this one is a colorful button. I love buttons. And Regia Marina's Connections. <clears throat> While the bold leadership of El Duce Carlos Scorza has won many enemies who envy its prowess and strength, has won some respectful friends as well in our navy. Though the Marina in particular has plenty of foreign contacts that will come in usefulness, will come in useful during this dark time. <clears throat> if we can leverage these contacts effectively, the ships will soon come in their hundreds and thousands, bearing the supplies and weaponry that we so desperately need. Fleets from all across the world will bring us the tools we need, and upon their sails and smokestacks, we will build our victory and get a naval department too. All right, let's go ahead and fund the Project Reno. And actually, he's working at a normal pace, finally. 
All right, and then control the skies. If we lose control of our skies, we'll lose everything. The Luftwaffe, the largest and most powerful air force in the world. As a fearsome enemy, should it be allowed to protect us freely, it'll end our industry and bring our country to its knees with carpet bombing and terror strikes. To this end, the Regia Aeronautica will receive additional funding so that it can focus on fighter innovation and increase our aircraft production as an additional support for our be beleaguered troops. We will institute dedicated anti-air... Anti-aircraft ground support units with both fixed and mobile weapon emplacements charged with keeping the skies clear from enemy bombers while our fighters and interceptors can test their enemy counterparts. Good, we get air superiority, air agility, not bad stuff. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. No, we can't do that. Ah, eh, go choose that one. It's already October, doesn't matter too much. Very nice. Now let's go and test it. Alright, so we have to make a choice here. I don't know if this will happen again when we play Democratic Italy, so what's down here? D do a good turn, be prepared, move our max dig in bonus and dig in speed, workplace, uh, energize, industrial efficiency and stability. I kind of want a more stable nation, I'll be honest. Men will win this war, labor will win, will win this war. Well, let's do labor will win the war. If there's something we learn from the two world wars is that the two battles fought in the factories. If our industry can't keep up, we'll lose. First ground, and then the war. We can't produce more man, but we can produce more equipment, much more equipment. We'll convert all non-essential factories into military production facilities, and many more shall rise. Chimneys and will crowd the skies. Smoke shall darken the air as we band nature itself into a weapon against the Germans. To the factories, proud workers of Italy, our destiny lies on the production lines. These traders shall be crushed under the, heel the wheels of our industry. Their pride and their arrogance shall burn in the fires of the forges, and their very hopes and dreams shall drown in the sea of molten metal. Well, we'll see. Oh, we're actually doing control skies still. For some reason, I thought we weren't done with that one yet. Huh. Scotland's not too bad. But there was one comment saying that we should play Scotland. They, I think they, someone said they start off as the only liberal democracy in the world or something like that. I'm totally okay with playing Scotland. Uh, I can put it on the list. It's not probably going to be super high since I already have, like, at the time of this recording, um, like, four other nations already in my mind. Especially because I want to play, like I said before, every other campaign is usually a Russian unifier, so after I do Russian unifier, I also have other thoughts about what other nations play. I want to play as a different Reichskommissariats, uh, Reichstadts down in Africa. I, I have an eye on China already. Um, Scotland definitely is on my list. I, heck, I even played Wales once, so. Wow. That's that's actually really good for Scotland. They have 100% compliance? Wow. Who is Priscilla? Buchan? Buchan? Oh. They, mm. Got a lot of manpower. Well, they're looking pretty good over there. But labor will win the war. A good night's sleep. Working overtime. Let's not work overtime, you know. Let's get a good night's sleep. As many workers live far away from production sites, we have ordered the construction of worker barracks and secure locations near the factories. Furnished with everything we can spare for our brave workers. It may not be enough to call it homely, but at least the exhausted workers won't have to walk for hours before coming home and will be able to have a good night's sleep before they resume working. It's sad that we have to ask those men to leave their families behind and have their lives revolve around work, but we wouldn't ask them for such sacrifices if it weren't for our last hope for victory. Stability for the nation, my friends. Absolute stability. As you can tell, research, it doesn't really matter at this point in the game. Uh, it really doesn't, since we're probably not going to end up in any sort of conflict with these guys. We'll do the best we can, of course. Oh, you canceled the non-aggression pact. How dare you? But hey, at least we got no debt, you know. A good night's sleep and be on schedule. Every hour, every minute, every single second of the work counts. <clears throat> All workers are required to be on schedule with their respective quotas. Those who exceed their due will be rewarded and made heroes of labor. Once the war is over, these men and women will be able to look proudly a scarred veteran in the face and say, I too fought for Italy on another battlefield, but I faced the same challenges and the same fatigue as you. I don't know about that, man, but, you know, okay. Our industry will sustain the request for supplies? It must. That might be a bit extreme going that far, but, hey, you know, whatever. I'm not going to go against El Duce here. El Duce, Daddy scores up. Daddy balding big head scores up. We love him, right? Energized for Italy, though. Our industrial output is skyrocketing, which is great, but as a predictable consequence, the need for electricity is ever more than greater, and that is far from good. If our lines go on the blackout, our industries will cease functioning. We might as well lose hours or even days of production. As such, we will build new electric plants for all, of all kinds throughout the empire. Coal plants, oil plants, hydroelectric dams, even solar panels if we need to. Nature gives us life and power, and it will bring death to the Germans. The most important part of that. Well, we're doing better on, on tanks. I like, I like that, so... Energized for Italia, and then men will win the war. 
Do a good thing. Oh, do a good turn. The invasion by the Hun has forced us to do many things that we normally never consider, although some might allow us for them anyways, with every available man sent to the front. There aren't enough remaining to guard the multitude of prisoners, both criminal and political, that our nations captured over the years. Therefore, it's sadly necessary that we release some and curb the sentences of others. Even the most heinous murders and degenerate anti fascists will be given their freedom, a week's worth of food, and a free bus ticket to the front. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, prisoners, prisoners might not be the most natural soldiers, so hopefully appreciate our kindness and understand that the German beasts would never be so lenient. And if nothing else, we'll soon have plenty of empty jail cells to fill with filthy Huns. It's a win, win, win. Ah, uh, I love winning. Well, sometimes. Usually. But maybe not all the time. Do a good turn. Uh, requires all the following. Wait, hold on. Um. Wait, hold. So you, we to do be prepared. Of course, we need one of these two. Through heck and back, we need to do be prepared. Um, that might. Oh, if you see this, you see that little dot. That might mean that these are supposed to be actually connected, maybe. Huh, well then. It's 1972. Yep, and screw it. Maybe we'll just use focus or uh, console commands to get this, because I want to get these, at least, at least back to heck. We have one final measure of dealing with the Germans. May God forgive us. Oh, uh, well, we can't do that, but let's, let's at least do this one through heck and back. Oh, we'll get worse. Well, let's see. Focus.auto. Oh, 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 what was it? Um, Focus.auto complete. Focus. Oh, there it is. You might as well do focus on autocomplete so no one else can do it as well. Uh, I can't remember. If you enable these console commands, does that affect all all the nations? Oh, we can't even do this anyways. That's that's so dumb. You can't even do that anyways. Uh, well, well, let's see what happens. I mean, obviously, the Germans are invading us. Uh, at this point, we are getting more political power, which is nice and all, but I really don't want to end the Italian campaign on this kind of lull. <laughs> but that's been kind of the kind of campaign overall. <clears throat> just reading what, you know, a, a very highly reformist Scorza would do. So, obviously we didn't get any event for the Middle East when we took out Iraq, Syria, the Levant, which we really should have, because that's pretty darn important for us, um, getting our territory back, basically. So, uh, I'll cut military spending as well at this point. Uh, the debt, the GDP is looking not too bad. We have got no debt. Unfortunately, I wish Goring would have been able to go to war and kill off Bulgaria, and in my mind, I suppose it'd probably be the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic to actually reunify all of. Oh, well, actually, Tukhachevsky, huh? Reunify all of Russia, so that'd be kind of cool. Actually, I played as Tukhachevsky as well. Oh, look at this. Free military factories? Cool. Superior Republic. Oh, uh, under Tomsk. Probably is not going to win. Under Andrei Sakharov. Other than that, there's really not much else here. Look at like Tokyo's not having a good time. Under Masanusuke? And apparent oh reflection okay it had been eight years since scores had become the duchy of Italy eight grand years since the triumphant victory over the forces of old of the rot that afflicted the empire for far too long scores the gaze upon Roma perched on an eloquent marble window frame he knew one thing the galvanizing victories the crushing defeats they were his for eight years he guided Italy for good or bad through the hardest times he has faced yet although it had only been less than a decade since that fateful day in Verona it felt like more than a lifetime one constant struggle marked his time in the seat of power a constant war between those who wanted to change fascism to adapt to the modern times and those who wished to ensure it returns to its roots this battle was all encompassing all important and perpetually or perpetual in its entirety such unwavering tension will retire even the most strong willed of men <clears throat> he look. He took just a minute to enjoy the glittering seascape of Rome, lit by a bright array of light in the midst of the inky black that had descended once more with the sunlight. A particularly large skyscraper constructed in the years following his ascension to Duce caught his eye. Scanning the imposing edifice from bottom to up top, it was clear to him. Fascism had borne such bountiful fruit, such wonderful and awesome gifts to the once destitute Italy. Those who had been swept by the wayside in the pursuit of this goal, unfortunate losses, of course, but nothing in comparison to the greatness Italy now possesses. There was one issue, though, a uh, thought interjected. What is fascism? Was it the show of popular might, a shared will of the people? Was it the glory of the state, the duchy, above all? Once again, scores confirmed to himself it had been his will alone that came to dominate what fascism had become. Had he made the right choices? 
<clears throat> the best choices in perpetuating fascism's glory or becoming his dad he knew that yes of course he had when Scorzo stepped out of the Grand Hall in Verona he knew that he would ultimately lead fascism down the right path the oil crisis the church the army even the party all were dealt with all were aligned with the path of fascism though it truly lead to the betterment of Italy forever and always as he leaned on the exquisite frame of power he knew fascism must change and meet the future so that the future will forever meet fascism you chose a more reformist path for Italy dawn of the new fascism well LBJ is still leading here, and it is 72, but I don't think I'm going to wait till 73 to see who becomes the president, so. People want, oh. Okay, so we're not done yet. Okay, cool. I thought we were just done there, because it sounded like we were, but back to our roots. Fascism is a good idea at its core. However, its implementation by Mussolini did not hold true to the spirit of true fascism. As a result, the system began to slowly become corrupted and rotten over time. It ended up becoming no better than the corrupt capitalist system it replaced, and with many Italians still chafing under a corrupt system that cares not for the average Italian. No more today. Uh, Duce Scorzo shall speak before the Grand Council of Fascism to announce a new plan to correct the course of fascism. True fascism, he argues, has never been properly tried, but that changes now. With a particular emphasis on the vast government welfare programs aiming at lifting Italians out of poverty, the Duce shall set forth his grand vision for a newer, stronger, healthier fascism in Italy for the modern era. Well, at least we got more focuses to see how this crazy campaign will go. And that's uh, that many days. Uh, I'm going to read the next one anyways because we can. Uh, another round of fascism, or reform. Why not? Duce scores has outlined his vision for a newer, truer fascism. Now it's time to get to work implementing it. The Duce has drafted a sweeping new reform program to aid poor Italians. As for how the aid to these poor Italians will be implemented, it consists of four main prongs. First, pensions for elderly Italians, who, with particular emphasis on veterans who so violently served Italy during the war. Secondly, the urban and unemployed of of whom there are far too many in Italy's great cities. Third, the rural poor, who struggle to get by despite being the ones that feed Italy. And but finally, women, of whom far too many are working to get su to support their families out of the necessity to get by. It is truly an ambitious program, and the Duce will likely have to step on a few toes to get it all implemented, but who said it would be easy? Alright, at least we've got more stuff to do, and I want to get nukes before we end here, too, so. Nukes, for the people. Totally for the people. And support weapons? Well, it is 1972. Hope you're having a great year. We'll probably go with elite forces, because we can. Hmm. Civilian budget boost, huh? Alright, not bad. Oh, support weapons, not bad. Well, we're going to keep boosting up that budget so we can keep getting less political power drain, so we got that there. Test our work, thank you. 81% of the way there, not bad, not bad. Another round of reform, always more reform. Uh, someone else also recommended we play as uh, Switzerland, so I'm not opposed to that, but I don't think they have a unique focus tree, so... I'm going to wait until they get a unique focus tree if they ever do, so we'll see what happens, but new plans for the INPS. One of the cornerstones of Italy's welfare system has long been the Institutio Nacional de la Previdenza Social, or INPS. Aimed at providing social security to elderly Italians, it's clearly, it clearly isn't doing the job we needed to, considering far too many elderly Italians struggle to get by in what should be their golden years. This ends now. Nutria Scores has demanded a tremendous increase in funding for the INPS so that every elderly person in Italy can live their retirement at ease. In particular, the extra pensions will be given to those who have de demonstrated loyalty to the party and country, whether it be by serving the party itself, the black shirts, or otherwise. We will make it known that if you do your part for your government, the government will do its part for you when you're old. And we got oh, quite a few days here. That's really fine with me. Let's see, we got a little bit of debt there, which I don't agree with. But hey, at least we're increasing GDP, right? It's always about that GDP. 500 naval XP is not bad. And anything else? What are constructing? Still building roads down here. Man, they just can't build roads fast enough. Of course, we do have minus 68% construction speed, so what do you expect? We still have a true meritocracy. Wow. We've got a whole lot to build still. Alms. Wow. That is surely a lot to build. But they'll get it done eventually. I don't like this plus 2% proportional GDP cost. Do get slightly more stability and, sli and a little bit more mother poverty change, which is okay with me. An alpine meditation. The fire crackled and danced, a light from it illuminating the otherwise cold and dark room. <clears throat> In an old chair in front of the fire sat an old and tired king, a cup of tea in his hand. He sipped it as the wind outside caused the windows to creak and moan, little frost angels appearing and just as quickly melting away by the heat emanating from the fire. A door creaked open and the sun entered. Slowly taking a seat next to the king in order to not derail the old man's train of thought, as he gazed at the man's tired and unfocused gaze, the crown prince thought, without even thinking, reached out and took his father's hand. Come to bed, father, it's getting late. Whatever's troubling you, I'm... I'm sure sitting here and staring off into the fire isn't fixing you. The old man didn't react for an uneasy 
couple of seconds before slowly, he turned his head to look at his son and tired look in his eyes. I, I can't. I haven't managed to have a good night's sleep since that man scores to survive the latest round of protests. He's planning something. I can sense it, and I, I feel as if I'm playing chess against a man who can't even see the pieces of it. No matter what I do, I, <clears throat> I need to get some sleep. Without another word, the old man got up from the chair and made his way to his room, leaving his son alone with a dying fire. Surely it's just an old man paranoia. Surely, surely, surely. I don't know anyone named Shirley, but that's okay. Why not? We'll go and do that one. And new plans for IMPS. How about increased unemployment subsidies? Who cares about the budget? Too many Italians are currently unemployed in the great cities of Italy. Let's should not do. Duce Scorza's outlined a massive program aimed at not only alleviating the suffering of the unemployed, but also treating the problem at the source by reducing unemployment altogether. Prevention is the best cure, as they say. Not only will unemployment subsidies be increased, but the vast make-work programs will be implemented. The best way to alleviate unemployment is, well, employment after all. Now, some of the critics say that these programs are inefficient and do not address the root of the problem. They also take issue with the fact that these programs will be run by the PNF, but who cares what they think? The newly employed underclasses certainly won't. Get even more subsidies. To, we go with no unemployment subsidies, with trinket unemployment subsidies. God, I love Victoria too. Uh, slight, ever so slightly monthly poverty change for quite a bit more, basically a third more cost compared to the uh, new plans for the INPS. Ooh. Our budget. Mobilize the black shirts. Whoa. Oceanic rallies. Greeting the future. Continue agrarian reforms. All right. Reform the Camera di Fasi e della Corporazione. Oh, high tax. Oh, we go from high tax. Oh, we should have done no taxes so we can get high taxes later. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Italy. You definitely need a rework. That's all right. I know it's coming. And actually, if you, see, if you saw the, like... At the time of this recording, there's a teaser for the uh, Democratic Italian, um, you know, rework development. It looks really good. It looks, honestly, maybe a little bit too complex, but it looks pretty good. The devs definitely know, for the most part, what they're doing, you know. Eh, the USSR's here. The Return of the Reds. Too bad there's nothing in the game allowing us or allowing them to kill each other off. Ooh, Finland's looking so pretty thick. But help the poor families. Italian farmers are the country's backbone. They feed the entire country. We would not be great without them. And yet, far too many rural Italians live in crushing poverty despite their importance to the Italian economy and society. This is completely unacceptable, and Duce Scorza knows it. That's why the Duce has developed an extensive rural assistance program aimed at fixing this great injustice. Rural families will be provided with financial assistance, tax cuts, competitive advantages, and all manner of boons to ensure that they can live the life they deserve to live. Not only that, but there's something in it for us, too. The rural poor will remember how we came to do the rescue, and they will no doubt recognize that it is the PNF on whom they depend for this assistance. They will reward us with their loyalty. They would rather be dependent and rich than independent and poor. Huh. Oh, we just, we immediately just changed the poverty rate. Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Okay. Sure. Wow. We just literally just change the poverty rate just just because we can. That's a bit nuts. Do we do everything? Do we do everything here? Oh, okay, cool. All right, I guess we probably want to do. Uh, oh, we already did those guys. Oh, they haven't con conquered Kazakhstan though. That sucks. How's the budget looking? Okay, it could be a lot. It could be a little bit worse than that. So, at least we're still deficiting. That's good. Oh, survey for project two. Go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, over here, not too much. And after we help poor families, we'll encourage maternity. Mothers are perhaps the most important people in any society. Without mothers bringing new children into the world, no society can expect to survive. Italian women have a sacred duty to bring into the world a new generation of Italians who will lead Italy to a new generation of greatness. <clears throat> There's a problem, though. Due to the unfortunate economic conditions, many Italian women are putting off marriage and motherhood in favor of work. This should not do it all. Duce Scorza shall rectify this problem twofold. Firstly, he will sex up tax barriers to dissuade women from seeking jobs. The most important job they can do is have is that of a mother, after all. Secondly, he will reward women who become mothers by providing them with all manners of benefits, tax credits, and subsidies. And those benefits will only increase the more children they have. They will realize that their most sacred duty will be far better for them to, than any other job. We get more monthly population and stability. Not bad. Ah, 
Good, good, good. I thought they were the new face of fascism, though. But maybe that's just me. Alright, so we can stop doing stuff like this, but... Oh, wow, minus 15 billion is not bad, but I want more political power still, so... Oh, error minus... That's not bad. Well, when you change the poverty level, when you just feel like it, not bad. It's improving at 2.25. Scores is doing great. Don't ask about the true meritocracy stuff, though. <laughs> Alright, what do we have over here? Fund the project? Yeah, let's go and fund the project. That would be good. 84% of the way there. And the Verona Manifesto. The new reforms have been a huge success. The Italian people have voiced their support for them. They've bullied Duce Scorza's popularity within, with the Italian public. And bullied by this, Duce Scorza has decided to proclaim a manifesto for his new fascism in Verona. It will contain details of further reforms that the Duce has planned, all in the name of restoring fascism to its original tent and true form. The manifesto and proposed reforms therein will undoubtedly ruffle the feathers of the establishment, but to make an omelette, you have to break a few eggs. It is for a good cause, and that cause is for a stronger... Italia. The absolutely most important thing to have is a stronger Italia. Alright, let's grab some of this. Thank you. And we'll grab, uh, if you want to read about that, go right ahead. Uh, after that, there's not really, not a whole lot here. Well, I'll get some light aircraft. Why not? we get some better jet cast because you can. Barona Manifesto. Followed up with, or form the the, I already read this, Camera di Fasi e della Corporosani. I don't speak Italian. One of the Duce Scorza's new reforms is to reform the legislature, the Chamber of Fasci, and corporations. Since 1939, there have been no direct election to the legislature. Instead, all the members ha have been appointed from members of the PNF, as well as representatives from the various trades and corporations that make up the Italian economy. Well, Duce Scorza has changed plans. While he will not go as far as restoring popular suffrage for the entire chamber, what he will do is make it so that workers can directly elect their own representatives to the chamber after all. We cannot necessarily trust corporate managers to adequately represent the needs of the workers. This will make it easier to address the issues that the Italian worker faces and make it so even the, even, make it so even the lowest Italian worker has a voice. Oh, t minus 20%. Oh, Jesus Christ, this looks really bad. We get more income, though. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Minus 0 .03. That's actually probably the best we've seen so far in this campaign. Well, it's all about to go down even worse. Whew. Who need factory speed, output, stability? Nah. Who needed that, right? A letter to the youth. Students and children of Italy, lend me your ears and your hearts for just a single moment. Ah, uh, it's a little bit too tight. Too high up time. Let's go that one. I have, since the moment of assuming power, strove to prove only one thing, that fascism is not a decrepit doctrine of your parents and teachers, but instead a doctrine of all Italians, including you. It is undeniable that civil, political, and economic victories given to you that by my leadership have made the Italian people the bane of the world. From the decadent hall dance halls of New York to the poverty-ridden slums of Bangladesh, all suddenly wish that they could have had the good fortune of being born an Italian. Tell me, are these fruits something that's a decrepit and do fixed dogma that could have produced? The answer to that is, of course, no, 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 no. Fascism is a living and breathing ideal. One of those changed for today's generation just as it will change for the generation after us. Fascism cannot die for it, it's eternally living. Fascism fascism cannot be displaced and rejected by the future that for it is the future. It is an ideology that will never falter, never stumble, never be replaced. It is the only ideology that can truly guide Italy to the destinies she deserves. It will I will end this letter by promising that the best days are still ahead for not just us, but for fascism itself. Avanti Italia. Sign Duce Carlo Scorza. See, he loves us. He, he wants the best for us. Duce Scorza only wants the best for the nation and its people. That's why he implemented a true meritocracy in the ABCs of economics for Italy. Proposed term limits? How about let's go ahead and rework the electoral system? Duce Scorza decided that the electoral system for the Chamber of Fasci and corporations, as well as the Senate, is flawed. As it stands, it only really represents the entrenched interests of Italy rather than the common Italian, and elections are rather too centralized. That changes now, though. Duce Scorza will not go as far as to reduce or restore popular suffrage, however. He will greatly loosen the restrictions on those who can run for the legislature. Under these new reforms, any member of the PNF will be able to be run for, or be able to run for office. This will make it so rank-and-file PNF members shall have a voice, not just the top of the party, which will get slightly more stability, uh, slightly more political power, and a little bit better ideology drift defense. So, we only have minus point three. Very soon we have it even worse. And I don't see how much money we're making, actually. Alright, how much political power are we losing? Well, 0.29, yeah, I, I actually could be a lot worse. So, not too worried about that then. After that, let's see. Commission di Fabrica and Consigli di Gestione. Why not? 
In the early days of the fascist revolution, national syndicalism had a strong influence on many of the big names of early fascism. The most prominent of those was Firebrand and Mondo Rossoni, who was forced to resign from leadership of the National Confederation of Fascist Syndicates in 1928. However, Decades later, his ideas and international syndicalist ideas in general found a supporter none other than Duce Scorza. <clears throat> Citing Rossoni as an inspiration, the Duce has announced new industrial and labor laws for Italy's factories. Every factory will be managed by two committees, one set by government representatives and technicians, and the other by representatives of workers and executives. They will be required to work on setting production goals and otherwise managing the factory together. Cooperation, or cooperation breeds success. We can't do this all alone. Even though we can get pretty close to doing pretty well on our own. This is not bad. I mean, look at this. 63% tax rate? God, I'd hate to pay taxes taxes in Italy in this world. But hey, you know what? That's alright. It's for the good of the people, as we should all remember, right? Let's go survey for a project, too. Ah, happy lag, ne November 1st, 1972. I wonder who's going to win in America, then, since we've... Uh, spent this much time. Let's see. Reaffirm PNF primacy. The PNF's primacy in Italian society has decayed since the era of Mussolini. There are too many people in the chamber and senate who do not necessarily align with the Duce or his goals. Technocrats, royalists, old god conservatives, and so on. They have proven to be a nuisance in the past and will undoubtedly continue to be so in the future. Well, no longer. We have now the strength and popularity that we do not need to keep those obstinate figures in the legislature placated any longer. And China modernizes as well. We shall orchestrate the removal from the legislature. No, they are of no use to us anymore. Naturally, they will be replaced by the people loyal to the Duce and the PNF. Very good. Perhaps we'll be the next Chinese century. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't know, man. China, pretty big. Let's go here first. There we go. And we shall choose what? Ah, oh, choose one of these. Ah, 70 days. That's pretty good for us. Boost. Boost. Infinite growth, my friends. Oh, more popularity for fascism? Don't mind if we do. I don't know if I already said this, but one of the comments from yesterday said I should play Switzerland. I think I already did, but yeah, I will eventually. Hopefully. If they get a focus sheet, like I said before. Uh, let's actually go and fund the project first. We're 13% away from completing it, which is pretty nice. Alrighty. So, I'll continue gearing reforms. Duce scores his previous attempts, uh, previous Hungarian reforms have been a roaring success, greatly supported by the rural Italian communities, of course. These reforms were only the prelude to something even grander in scope. Now, however, the time is coming to press ahead with another far larger package of agricultural reforms. This time, the reforms shall focus on centralization and modernization of agriculture. The government shall buy up the land owned by small rural farmers, who will, of course, be given the appropriate compensation, while centralizing agriculture around massive government-owned farms. High quotas will be set for the farmers out of necessity, but... They shall have no reason to fear, for the government shall provide the means and methods to modernize Italian agriculture as much as possible through new techniques, machinery, pesticides, and, of course, so on. Alrighty, let's grab some advanced jet interceptors as well as some stealth technology. Why not? Improved main battle tanks? How about even better main battle tanks? Like reserves? No debt here. Debt is merely a capitalist thing. After this, got about a month left. And uh, Nacionale della Casia del Popolo. Popolo. Few things are more tragic than a family with no roof over their heads, and there are far too many people in Italy's great cities who lack just that. This is unacceptable in a nation as great as ours. Luckily, Duce scores as a solution to this problem. He shall merge a few government agencies to create a massive government program to house the urban poor. This massive undertaking will make sure that every Italian has a roof over their head shall co come heck or high water. Some will complain that we will end up destroying the historic district, while other critics claim that this is merely a ploy to make the urban poor easier to track and thus more controllable, by centralizing it around the fascist power centers like police stations, monuments, PNF headquarters, and so on. But, who cares what they think? The newly housed poor sure won't. Ah, very good. I love it. Fascism for the common man. Because then there's not much left after this. We already got through, like, the top half of this. Of course, we got to implement some, you know, term limits, oceanic rallies. we got to mobilize some black shirts. Oh, it's not bad, too. We get even slightly less political power than the last one we got. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. Actually, continue agreeing reforms is nice. Advanced jet tactical bombers. Three days left. We might as well address that real quickly, then. Why not? Advanced jet strategic bombers, because we love it. Oh, sits up top here. Thank you. Improved APCs. Advanced APCs. And we shall go ahead and choose this one. 
and fascism for the common man. The pamphlet had arrived in a specially marked envelope, the PNF symbol clearly printed on the outside of it. Similar envelopes had, over the past week, been sent to nearly every household in Italy deemed politically palatable by the party bureaucracy in line with the directive sent down from the top. Some of the bureaucrats who compiled this had naturally been bewildered by the implications of the order, but it was not their place to question the wisdom of El Duce. When anyone would open the envelope, it would they would find a simple pamphlet folded it in half, unfolding it, a simple introductory message was present, informing them that they had been selected to help influence the future fascism within Italy. Several rows of questions were present, each one offering a different proposed policy in a scale going from very unfavorable to very favorable, in order for the person filling out the pamphlet to offer his view on the matter. Questions had, of course, been carefully drafted in such a way to ensure a desirable out response from the voters while also not appearing to be clearly biased towards any position. It had taken quite a few frustrating nights to achieve this, but as they say, nothing good can be produced from without a little elbow grease. The common man can have his democracy, and we will make sure that they choose correctly. I love it. Most proposed term limits for the Duce. Duce scores this proposed, perhaps the most radical of his reforms, term limits for the Duce. He's proposed that the Duce will have a fixed 10-year term limit, with no possibility of renewal. After the term is up, the Duce will be required to step aside with a successor to be chosen by the Grand Council of Fascism. This idea is not entirely without precedent. Mussolini himself toyed with the idea, but ultimately decided not to implement it. However, this will undoubtedly be a tough sell to PNF High Command, but Duce scores it will assure them of the necessity in order to keep any one person from consolidating too much power for far too long and thus corrupting the fascist system. Fascism cannot become corrupt or we, it all fails. Combattere, lavorare, vincere. If you're Italian, I'm sorry for butchering all these words. Fight workwin. The truly words live by. This sums up the philosophy that Duce scores us shall encourage in all Italian workers. It will encourage selflessness and hard work amongst the workers. Those who best embody that model shall be rewarded in kind. The most indefatigable workers shall receive high pay raises, rises, and many promotions as a reward for the hard work and sacrifices. Not only that, but the way workplaces are organized shall be revamped. It shall follow a military style motto. Order, discipline, and self sacrifice shall be the name of the gem. Name of the gem? Name of the game. The military won the war, but workers organized along military lines shall win the peace, fight, work, win. Yes, good. Let's go and survey for a project. Good, good, good. Ah, I love reforms and scores is absurdity. When the rumor had first reached his hotel room in uh, Rome, of course, <clears throat> the New York Times foreign consultant... Uh, who received it had skimmed it, written it off as a prank, and then proceeded to crumple the report up and toss it into the trash. Oh. The very idea that the report had suggested was, to put it bluntly, completely, and utterly absurd. An authoritarian fascist state such as Italy, one that refused to leave behind the 1930s like much of the world had outside of its duches, often restrained reforms and proclamation about fascism was a consistent actor, a rational actor. The idea of such a state changing its entire system so radically by implementing something as ill-defined as term limits? Total poppycock. Several days had passed without any updates to suggest such a policy was truly to be implemented, and much neither to his future shame nor pride. The Forbes correspondent had more or less written off the rumor, and then, at only a, a little past eight in the morning, he was awoken to the sounds of students marching and cheering in the streets. Opening the blinds, he peeked through the, to see a mass of young fascists and veteran black shirts, some carrying porches of scores and others waving on letters. As he stared at this, this demonstration, amused, he picked up his hotel room's telephone and dialed the correspondent for the Washington Post. Morning, Jack. Morning, Steve. Hey, do you know what the demonstrations are for today? You haven't heard yet, ma'am? It's the strangest thing I've heard in all my years of working in this beat. Scorza himself went on the radio this morning and announced that he's putting a limit on how many years someone can be Duce. It's got the youth all abuzz with hopes for further reforms. The foreign correspondent was silent for a long time before speaking again. What? What? What did you say? Sorry, I just had to do it like that. Cool. Oceanic rallies. Or... Is there anything more vast and deep than the deep blue ocean stretching on into the horizon as far as I can see? Only the crowds that Duce scores that attracts at his rallies, of course. Everyone needs to know that the people are behind the Duce, and we shall do that by making his rallies stretch as far as the eye can see. We'll organize grand speeches and choreograph the activities of the crowd, all swell filming the whole thing and having men cold pop the blaster over all the airwaves. We should also keep the crowd inflated by whatever means are necessary, whether it's by busting in supporters, buying them off, or convincing them by giving them some sort of threat. These rallies will be even vaster than the entire... Atlantic Ocean. Very good. Very, very good. Happy 1973. And also, uh, off screen, the new guy was elected in America, McGovern. A liberal Democrat, George McGovern. If you like to read about him, go right ahead, but we must move on and press with funding our nuclear program. We're 90% of the way there, my friends. Things are going to get very heated around here, and that's what we like, right? Beautiful. Uh, research. Money. Growth. Oh no! We have some debt. No, 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 no. 
Alrighty tidy. Mobilize the black shirts. The black shirts have long been one of the pillars of our support. Without the black shirts, there will be no fascist revolution. However, they have not been utilized effectively in the recent years. They have been sitting idly for too long and are not really integrated effectively in the Duce's new regime. That changes now though. The black shirts shall be mobilized and involved once more in the day today life of the average Italian, slowly, subtly, but surely. We shall have new or law enforcement jobs filled by black shirts. In addition, we shall increase their organization and discipline among military lines. Finally, we shall encourage more Italians to join them, a surefire way surefire way to strengthen the fascist revolution and most importantly, our support. We get a little bit more stability for a little bit more amount of time, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Heavy aircraft looking pretty good. Let's grab some thick, advanced jet transport plane arenos. Also, we got, we got quite a few... Uh, no, not enough transport helicopters. We got a good amount of main battle tanks. We actually literally have main battle tank support, you know, for all of our divisions, which is, I think, pretty awesome. So, Oceanic Rallies, let's mobilize them black shirts. Ah. ah, what's more beautiful than men in black shirts? But greeting the future. The old man stood at the back of the rally, his grandson excitedly cheering the man taking the stage in front of them. A new generation of black shirts stood in front of El Duce, ones who had never known the struggles of the earlier days, experienced the first march of all those years ago, which brought El Duce to power in the first place. It filled his old heart with joy to see the youth follow the same light that he had all those years ago. His mind began to drift as he thought about it, images appearing in the head as long as he did so. 1922, the year it all began, black shirts marching proudly through the streets of Rome as the radios played news of the king's capitulation. Fourteen years later, the triumph in Ethiopia, his mother had been so proud to see her boy returning as a war hero. Another nine years later, the victory celebrations in Rome, Mussolini raised his hands in triumph as he declared Italy victorious. On the stage, scores of praise his own hands in victory, and unnoticed by the old man, his grandson cheered. Several years later, El Duce had died. Siano was in power now. Chaos in the Mediterranean. Uncertainty for the future of the movement he dedicated so much to. More rallies. Bombs. War in the Orient as the Turks stabbed us in the back. He was there at the son's funeral. His son's funeral. The other members of his squad and all black shirts in attendance and with him. Another year later, the triumph of scores of fills with his heart with hope and once more. More marches, victories, more pride in his homeland with every passing day. On the stage, scores of calls out to the youth who enthusiastically cry back, swearing their allegiance to fascism. Even more years, his grandson became more active in the party politics, much to his quiet pride. The years began to blur as a man thinks through it all. He looks up at El Duce on the stage. He looks frail, just so frail like him. His grandson, God bless his soul, had gotten so excited by El Duce's declarations that he had pushed through the crowd to cheer on the black shirts. A smile crept onto his face as he watched this. A single tear ringing down his cheek. A lifetime of service. And our eyes in the army. The relationship between the armed forces and the fascist government has not always been cordial. After all, the Italian forces swear their oath of loyalty to the King Umberto and not, uh, not to us. Combined with the army presenting an increasing role of the black shirts, Duce scores as good reason not to trust the army, especially its upper echelons in the officer corps. Luckily, we have the secret police, OVRA, on our side. They shall be instructed to start spying on the armed forces at all levels, though, with a particular emphasis of the top brass. If they are planning anything, we shall know about we are sure to know about it. Which is a very, very good thing. And no more debt. Good. <sighs> not bad. Minus 21 billion. That's not bad. I mean, obviously, they've got high taxation. People probably don't like high taxation. I know I don't, but, you know, whatever. Heavy aircraft stealth technology? Why not? And we shall have this done soon. Three days. Well, yeah, let's go and do the other one then. Our eyes in the army. Dual meetings. Very, very nice. Only minus 325 political power, that's all. I love skirts. Improved ceramic compounds? Why not? Followed up with... Threats and bribes. Duce scores his reforms have been a roaring success with the Italian public, and as a result, his popularity is even higher than before. However, not everyone is happy. Throughout the various echelons of the regime, key figures are starting to speak out against Duce's policies. Worse yet, they are publicly criti speaking critically of them. Many are publicly expressing their doubts on the Duce's agenda. This cannot be tolerated. Fortunately, it should not be too hard to shut them up. A bit of old-fashioned fascist persuasion should do the trick. A few threats here, a few bribes there. Whatever the methods, we shall bring them on board, or at least force them to keep their doubts to themselves one way or another. One way or another, we shall get them done and dusted with. Actually, let's take a look at the world. So, stability, 100%. Wow, Scotland's looking not too bad. War support? Uh, actually, let's take a look at political power. Wow. Wow. We're the third worst nation in terms of political power. Holy cow. Republic of China, of course, too. Factories? We're number three in the world. We're slowly catching up to Germany and even the U.S. And we're above Japan, so we're technically maybe the third largest economy in the world. It depends on the GDP, of course. Population-wise, we're not even in the top five, which makes sense. Is there a way for us to see GDP? India only has two research slots, off. China has five? 
Wow. But dual meetings. Exactly six in the evening. Two, two cars apart from two different residences on two different sides of Rome. In order, in one car traveled Unio Borghese, the close friend and ally of Del Duce. And in the other car traveled the crown prince of Italy. A worried look on his face. Face. Both had vastly different reasons to travel to meet their respective confidants, and yet, like most things in politics, it would be lying to say that they weren't connected. As they traveled, both men were left to their own thoughts as their respective drivers navigated the often busy and twisting streets of the capital. Borghese, an old man who still burned with passion and love for fascism, considered every angle of the plan he had, he had been sent last night in a letter. It was bold, to be sure, but such boldness was necessary to push Italy forward onto the world stage. It would take much effort to build the web of networks that Duce had asked for, but for him, no effort was too large to protect the ideology he truly loved. For the Crown Prince, his trip was much less pleasant. Every mile of it, he was left thinking about his father and his state of mind, and the letter a servant had slipped to him when they were surely prying eyes were watching. It was from his father to a certain general, which one he couldn't tell due to the name being written in code, requesting an urgent meeting with him at once. He had no way of knowing for sure why his father had done such a thing, but he had a pretty good guess. Scorzo. The gosh darn rat was constantly scheming and plotting something, and whatever he had cooked this time was certainly not, could not be good. He had succeeded all those years ago to shut the page that was about to turn, and he would be gosh darned if he was going to allow him to do it again. Leaning forward, he told his driver to step on it. Is it paranoia that they're truly out to get you? Eh, maybe a little bit. Strength of the MSVN garrisons. We cannot trust the armed forces, even with the OVRA spying on them. Duce Scorza cannot fully trust them to properly safeguard the fascist revolution. We cannot even be sure if they are even on our side at all. Fortunately, there are people whom we can trust, though. And those people are the fine people of the MSVN, or MVSM, or the black shirts. We shall strengthen them by providing them with the finest military-grade equipment Italy has to offer. Tanks, machine guns, all fair game. Whatever they need, they shall get it. What are we going to build? Oh, a lot of factories down here. Nice. Italy takes care of its own. Nice. Wow. Lots and lots and lots of construction here. Holy cow. And I love it. Alright, what are we doing here? Uh, surveying for a project, of course. Oh, we got about a week left for that. Not bad. We can do it again if we really feel like it. This is a lot longer episode than I thought what would happen, but that's alright with me. That's okay. Throw out some bribes. How about strengthen the garrison? I think that's a pretty darn good thing to do. It's August 4th, though. Controlling the party. It had been a busy week for the squad, far busier than even during the rise and upheaval of the old crisis. Every Monday, new letters were delivered to an unmarked post box with a list of names, most of them no-name minor bureaucrats and officials within the PNF. Each name would be underlined with three, one of three colors, the number of colors oftentimes corresponding with any other equipment given to a squad with the letter. If a name was underlined in red, the order was to find and intimidate the person. A couple of bruises, maybe even a broken bone if they were being stubborn, just enough to get them to shut up and follow orders. If a man or if a name was underlined in gold, the order was to try and bribe them, usually with auxiliary funds provided for the mission. Of course, some people weren't interested in being bribed with money, so if necessary, additional names would be provided for prostitutes, drug dealers, anything that else that's exotic. Finally, if a name was underlined in black, well, it didn't take too much to figure out what that meant. <clears throat> Looking at the list he had received today, he saw five names. Three were underlined in red, a group of local politicians who hung around at the same cafes and smoked the same cigars. The next name was underlined in gold, some local stockbroker, and a few gold coins had been provided with a letter. One that looked like they dated all the way back to when Venice had a doge, so it seemed self-explanatory enough. Final name was underlined in black, some local policeman and hardline fascist. He pitied the poor man as he drew his gun and loaded it. Policing could be such a dangerous profession. Discipline all will be maintained in these trying times. Get 93% done, and then isolate the court. Whilst we've been quite successful in cleaning our government of subversive and untrustworthy people, some have managed to slip through the cracks. In particular, some very pro-royalist politicians are left in the government to be a thorn in our side, but they've been influential enough to avoid removal until now. With we now the strength to, if not purge these politicians outright, at least soft purge them, isolating them politically or otherwise rendering them politically impotent. What's more, we shall have OVRA intercept the private communications of Umberto in his innermost circle in the court. No secret shall be beyond our reach. All right, let's see. It's a little bit way too ahead of time for that. Naval stuff. We'll get some Carlo Berga mini class ships. That's the work. Uh, isolate the courts. I love it. Four hundred thirty factories. Not bad. We do have a little bit more debt, but whatever. And happy September first. And we'll probably get another event soonish. No? Yes? 
Propaganda Overdrive, so Duce Scorza's decision to modernize and reform Minkol Pop to actually be effective rather than abolishing the formerly useless ministry as Siana wanted to was undoubtedly a wise decision. Now shall truly show its worth to us. It's time for Minkol Pop to shift into Maximum Overdrive. Maximum Overdrive. While it's always turned out a steady stream of pro-fascist pro propaganda, it shall do so now cons constantly, at nauseum, until the average Italian is inundated with every waking moment of their lives. What's more, we shall start to ever so subtly cast shadows at King Umberto. Nice. Alright, time for a lot of shipperinos. Alright, let's go do some sonars. 1960 sonars, a little out of date. Uh, battleships? I will resume battleship development. I love me some battleship Renos. 125 billion GDP, not bad. Um, it sucks that the Republic of Ukraine is still here. They have the gross, the GGR, and then the Moscow autonomy, and the ex commissariat Calcasin, and Burgundy, and stuff like that. And Cornwall still exists for some reason. But, it is what it is, right? Propaganda overdrive, and it's about to get rough. Oh boy. Sognos disappearance. Oh boy. Now, we should get another event here, too. Ah, playing hardball. And taking every ounce of skill, the party bosses had to force through the new directive sent down from the top. Many felt it almost helpless when, it fir when first reading it. I'm exactly sure how they were so fundamentally changed decades of past laws and, indeed, the very Constitution itself and the time allotted to them. So, it was quite clear that the failure in this matter was not an option, especially with the number attached to the notice. I, 1 to 49, or some quickly recognized it to the men, January 49, the month Caesar across the Rubicon. With an iron grid of determination, the party boss is set to work implementing the directive. Every favor earned through years of service was called in. A virtual media block blockout was carried out to ensure the king's allies would be blindsided when the announcement was made. Eyes were kept on every individual member of the team responsible for the entire operation, even as a slightest slip-up could mean the failure of the gambit. A close couple calls were made, perhaps the closest being when one of the bosses had gotten careless with the secretary at lunch and spilled the beans. It took a new wardrobe, all an all-expense-paid trip to New York, and a bonus to her elderly father's pension for her to, for her to agree to, quiet, to keep quiet on it. Finally, after much hard work, it became step, time to step up to the plate. In a shock media announcement, El Duce made it clear that in an unprecedented move, he had amended the Constitution to strip the Royal Court of all direct ability to influence policy. Within minutes, the boss's works came to effect. Local challenge to the changes were a strange or strangled in the crib before they could get off the ground. Embarrassing media challenges were silenced, and protests were kept at a minimum. When it was all over, they drank a toast to themselves, and a job well done. Italy shall never be the same, and is about to get rough. Our decision to have the OVR's, OVA, OVRA spy on King Alberto and the armed forces will undoubtedly press this sense. Prescient. As they have now brought to our attention some dire news, there have been significant rumblings in the armed forces and the king and the court of King Umberto. It looks like they're planning something. Whatever they're planning, it can't be good for us. Time to make some phone calls and quickly round up all loyal black shirts. We've got them. We have them surround Rome immediately. Whatever they're planning, we must be prepared for the eventuality that things may get a little nasty. Love it. More GDP though. 126 billion. Not bad. How's poverty doing right now? Actually. 140, that's not bad. And academic base, we're about to improve. Get us through November, we will improve, probably. Yeah, yeah, we will. I love it. Anything more budget? It's almost 1974, wow. Oh, military austerity, nope. Oh. Propaganda overtime is about to get rough, sons. And another march on Rome. We have passed, oh, we have passed a trial, huh? Our improved academic base and foundation of societies are writing. It cannot be overstated how much the institutions that define civil life rest on the bedrocks of the written word. Society marches forward with hand in hand with the literature of the time. It lives and dies by the high tides of writing. She sleeps when the pages are burned and awakens when the curious young person decides to scratch something on the palm leaf. It is a progenitor of liberty and may spell the end of it. Our schooling and our literacy matter more than nearly anything else. When it dies, progress isn't just halted, it actively begins to wither. Progress drives towards whatever ideal, be it racial purity, free markets, or equality, cannot survive without a pen. Yes, so yes. Our universities have expanded, but some man today is newly learning how to read, opening up the Pandora's box that is writing. I know I've read that before, but that is something to be celebrated. With academic golden age in Italy, fascism can do great. Another march on Rome, though. Black shirts, the time is now. Black shirts shall convene on Rome and occupy the capital just as Mussolini did at the start of the great fascist project. Whatever the king and his lackeys are planning against the Duchy shall be stopped. This could be very well the moment of fate, the moment that will forever shape Italy's destiny. We carry to the torch of the fascist revolution, and whatever may come, we shall finish this revolution the way it began with another march on Rome. Can't wait. Sounds like fun. Uh, I'll get the chips and queso, and uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, I love sonar. How about some uh, 96 nucleus reactor stuff? Go ahead. Does that change anything here? No, it does not. And it's about to get very, very rough. Sognos disappearance. Oh, no. 
At around 10 in the morning, it was the first discovered that uh, Edgardo Sagno, a well-known royalist and military general, had gone missing. By 10.20, the news had reached the office of El Duce, setting off a frantic series of searches and phone calls to members of the military brass across the country. By 10.45, news had reached the now isolated royal court, catching the already irritated and gravely suspicious king of off-guard. By 10.58, his son, having received an urgent call from the man, arrived to find him lying on the side on, the side on the sofa. Initially panicked by it, it took until 11.02 to force his father to calm him down enough for the two to talk. This is the conversation they had, as later testified by them, who bear the second. Thank you for coming as I requested my son. I'm not sure I could face a coming trials without you. Prince Vittorio Emmanuel. Please, Father, there was nothing. What is it that you need from me? I cannot lie to you. I've been very concerned of your health recently. Uh, my son, you are truly loyal to me and your country far more than I could have ever have expected. It is my great shame to admit to you that I have lied to you and deceived you. The letter you showed me several weeks ago addressed just to the general, I sent that to General Sogno to discuss taking action against Gorza. Father, you should have told me. And for that, I am sorry. I should have trusted you then as I do now. I have been informed that the general has now gone missing, and I do not truly know that it is good or, or ill omen for us. A great battle is approaching within this country, and I truly do not know if it is even possible for us to win. I am truly sorry, my son. I should have done more. An era, an end of an era approaches. A mystery unanswered. But the dawn of the next day had become obvious to the king and his son that whatever had happened to the general Slogno, it was almost impossible to imagine it had been anything pleasant. Despite this, for several more days, until they had held, they still held out hope. Waiting on the off chance that their worst fears would be proven wrong, eventually... Even they had to face the truth as many other Italian conservatives, anti scores of fascists, and other dissenters would. No one was coming to the rescue. With a dejected sigh, the crown prince drove home from his father's residence, a lingering dread in the back of his throat. For several decades after that fact, the Sogno incident would be come to be called as remained as an intensely debated topic for not just the usual conspiracy theorists and crackpots, but for many mainstream academics as well. Some would come to claim that the obvious explanation was the best one. Scores had simply found out about the man's plan and arranged for him to be disappear into one of the regime's many black holes in Africa and the Balkans. Another favorite explanation would come to be called the Brazil theory, claiming that Sogno had, realizing the hopelessness of the situation, simply fled to South America to live out in peace there from the way from the power games. Uh, to be uh, power games still being played in Rome. Still, even more wild explanations, explanations would be offered as well, claiming that things as wild as a Burgundian connection, a plan by the Japanese Kenpai Tai, the involvement of New York Mafia dons, and the very fringes of the movement, alien abduction. It means impossible to say what truly happened, but the fact remains that for the dissenters against the, the fascist orthodoxy enforced by Scorza in Italy at the time, Sogno's disappearance simply became one more addition to the long list of disappointments. What could have been? Another march on Rome? Why not? Nothing like marching to Rome with the boys. What's better than this? The party's greatest triumph, of course. You, me, the boys, having a cra crack in a cold one, going to Rome, eating some good cuisine, having some good wine. What else could you want, really? What else could you really want in life? More civilian factories? I thought so. Come on, don't click on the things that we don't need. We're going to Rome, boys. We're going to Rome. And we're marching on the way there, looking handsome and dashing all together. What more could you want? Planes flying overhead? To make it look even more spectacular? I think so. Looking not too bad. Uh, parts of this place need more love and attention. But hey, parts of it are looking okay. What was known as Somaliland? Looking alright. We didn't quite get this done yet, but you know, whatever. Oh, and we can survey for a project too? And it's almost done. Uh, yeah. Not bad. Oh, four hundred dead? No. March on Rome? All right, then. The party's greatest triumph. The elevator slowly descended down to the first floor, several guards standing within it along the Duce. Their faces steely and their weapons prepared as always. Scores of himself stood behind them, his face and hands wrinkled and saggy with age, but his uniform and eyes as bright as burning as always. The entire elevator was, to put it simply, at a loss for words when everything that had transpired the pro hours prior to the ride. On the side of the elevator, a speaker chimed in to announce that it was five in the afternoon, and before it even moved on to its next announcement, scores of his mind began to wander to everything that had happened. It started at the beginning of the day, the big announcement and press conference when they announced the long-suspected final step in his plans for fascism. Evidence had been found, he claimed, proving the king and certain members of the general staff had been in cahoots for a plan to forcibly remove the legitimate government from power and institute a policy of slavish obedience to the Germans. It was clear then, he continued, that Italy could not prosper under such circumstances that something had to be done. He paused for the dramatic effect before dropping the long-expected bombshell. The Italian monarchy, a reactionary anti-fascist institution, must go. The news had polarized Italy like he had expected and had taken every precious precaution taken to ensure that no massive upheaval would occur. For some time, he felt the very tension in the air itself, constantly wrapping itself around him and his allies and squeezing them for dear life. It was just when he was about to lose hope that the good news had come to him. The king and his royal family had boarded a plane and left for Washington. The breaking of that news had finally cut the tension, and with a triumphant look, he had greeted the crowds from the same bow 
balcony Mussolini had stood on all those years ago to announce the creation of a new nation, the Italian Social Republic. As the crowds roared with approval and patriotism, he knew that somewhere out there, his predecessors and the party were looking down on him with the pride in their eyes. As the elevator finally reached its destination, he reached up and wiped a single tear from his cheek. He was an old man now, not with much time left, not much, that much was obvious, but he had accomplished everything he had set out to do. Fascism had won his victory over Italy itself. Avanti Italia. The Italian Social Republic. Where have we heard that one before? And tester work. All right, so I guess the Italian Social Republic, if you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. Ia, ia, la, la, la. Cool. Is that, so I'm going to assume that's probably it at this point. We don't have an, like an ending event like you normally do for each of the nations when you actually get to this point. It seems like, oh, but happy 1974. Hope it'll be a great year for all of us. It's obviously really good for Italy, and uh, we're now the Italian Social Republic. We have no other focuses. Oh, SSR Ospreusen. Uh, if you like to read about this, I'm pretty much done with this campaign. I never read this before, but if you like to read about this, go right ahead. Oh, and Scorza's last act, of course. He sat alone in his office. A small glass of wine and ashtray only accompany is only accompaniment for the dreary hours of the early morning. Despite the great triumph he had overseen with the creation of the Republic, Scorza hadn't gotten a good night's sleep since, an unknown feeling weighing on his mind. As moved to pour himself another drink, a gust of wind and shook his window. Turning his attention towards it, walking over the window, he made sure to secure it, while at the same time he gazed out at the landscape of sleeping Rome. The streets were mostly empty, the house is dark, the market silent. O only an old man and his dog walking the street at this hour, the man's face and hands weary, but his clear love for the dog obvious. As Scorza watched the man, he felt a strong desire rising up within him, a will that he and the man could switch positions. He had accomplished so much in his tenure. He was sure of that, but in this, in this moment, he was just an old man, one whose youth had long faded away. He closed his eyes to break his, a, his gaze at the old man, but the idea refused to go away. When he returned to the desk, he opened a drawer and took out a sheet of stationery and pen. Part of him screamed for him to stop, to turn back and face the power and wealth surely ahead of him. Yet, even more told him to finish what he'd begun. The party had been hinting at it for years, and he had resisted them. Now, he was not so sure he, if he would. With lingering doubt, Scorza began to write his letter, letter of resignation. The future of fascism is unknown. The Duce steps down. Oh boy. Oh, look at the Grand Council. It's a big building. The Duce steps down. Democratic fascism? Preposterous. Democratic fascism. And so Dusk approaches a new order. And this is it, everyone. Cool. So, obviously, thank you for playing. But, as I said before, and as you all know, if you're still watching this, thank you for continuing to watch. Um, oh, we're the Imperial State of Iran. They're looking okay now. But, Italy's going to get a rework. It needs a little bit more, you know, work to bring it up to snuff, we'll put it like that. And we have Mediterranean blocks over here. But Italy, well, I wouldn't say this campaign was as fun as some of the others. It still wasn't too bad. We actually got through this campaign pretty darn quickly compared to some of the others, especially a lot of the Russian unifiers or even like Germany or America. But regardless, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you are, of course, new here, which you probably aren't by this time. Uh, check out my Discord if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous rest of your day.